If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Thursday, January 17, 2013. I'm your host, Tiffany Elias. Our guest in the Phoenix Monitor is one of the newest members of the University of Missouri coaching staff, but that's not keeping Mark Gangeloff from still making some serious waves in the pool. Joining us from Columbia, Missouri, Mark, thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. Thank you. So you made the switch from Auburn to Missouri. How's Missouri treating you? Yeah, things have been great. Um, my wife is actually from Columbia, Missouri, so it was really nice to uh, that Greg Rodenbaugh was able to reach out to me and kind of uh, said that he had this position open, and it all works out because um, I have two daughters, uh, Annabelle, who's three years old, and Hattie Rose, who was born just two months ago, to now be closer to grandparents and my wife to be closer to her family. So it's really good to be here, and obviously we have one of the best facilities in the country. So this is a program that's kind of making new strides and jumping new strides, and we get to be my family. So it's kind of the double whammy for, for me, being able to satisfy all things good. Wow, well that really sounds like a no-brainer for you. Uh, the grandparents nearby is always a bonus. Now, it must be, you mentioned um, the coach out there, he has a, a strong brushstroke background as well, so that must have been also an easy setup for the two of you to start working together. Absolutely. I mean, Coach Rodenbaugh has always done a great job at Arizona and now here at Missouri of developing great breaststrokers, some of which that I competed against it for a long time. So he kind of has a lot of good, great sets that I like to uh, kind of learn from. You know, he likes to pull a lot more than what I'm used to, and it's great for me to kind of watch breaststrokers do that and kind of think about that for even my own career um, and how I maybe didn't pull enough or am not, am not pulling enough. And I kind of think I bring a different dynamic of the way that uh, David and Brett have taught me throughout my career. So kind of the way I build through a practice or think about a practice. And it's really fun to have a new fresh face and new ideas for me to think about. Well, I'm really glad that you led into this conversation because I wanted to talk about what it's been like for you lately to be training and coaching. Now you've been doing that for a while, but you're still a, a full, a big force in the breaststroke world, and now you're coaching at Missouri. So why don't you tell us a little bit about balancing those those two things? The good thing that I have going on right now is that my office is literally 20 yards from the the swimming pool. So uh, there are times where I get my stuff done in here, and, and I quickly put on my suit and I go out there and I jump in. Um, so that's the one reason that this works is just my proximity to the pool. I don't have to travel a long way. I don't have to get it done. I'm already here coaching, um, and I'm all, always thinking about swimming all day long, so it's not very hard for me to then design a workout for myself. That, that is the part I struggle with the most, is having to create hard practices that I then have to apply to myself. Uh, I have no problem doing it with my current athletes, but it's a little bit harder um, doing it for yourself. Um, the good thing I have going on right now, though, is I have Julie Stupp, who's on staff here at Missouri as well. She's a new staff member. But she's also, you know, training and currently uh, thinking about potentially competing at either in modern pentathlon or triathlon. She's kind of working through both of those things. So we have been training partners in a lot of ways uh, since we both came on staff in August. Wow. Well, that was my follow-up question is, are you training alone? Because that would be difficult. So that must be nice to have someone there doing that with you. It makes all the difference in the world. If it was just myself trying to jump in the pool, I would struggle a lot more. I wouldn't get as much done. Um, but she helps me, motivate me. You know, we're always texting back and forth to each other, hey, when we want to swim today. Because, you know, it's the scheduling. We get the swimming done. It's just sometimes it's at 1 o'clock, sometimes it's at 5 p.m., and sometimes it's at 7.30 in the morning. And it's just a text message the, the day before or the hour before, and that's when we try and figure it out. Okay, so you touched on this just a moment ago, but what specifically have you learned through your coaching experience that you're still applying to your own training and uh, racing? 
for me, when I watch warm up, when I see kids warming up, um, I see them start to developing bad habits. And for me now, when I dive in the pool if I, or if I'm trying to swim, I don't necessarily swim slow and I don't necessarily swim sloppy. And I try and then convey that to the athletes I coach. But um, being at the maturity level I'm at now, I know that uh, once I'm in the pool, once the first stroke that I take, I know that it has to be good. You know, a lot of times we like to run through workouts and just kind of um, loosen up and give ourselves 30 minutes to be ready for a practice. And when in actuality, you can be ready a lot faster than that. Wow, that's really interesting. So do you really enforce having a pretty stroke, if you will? It would, would that correlate to correct or not necessarily? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, you want to make things race applicable. So if you're going to do a different type of stroke um, for your warm-up, I don't really think that applies to what you want to race like. So um, for like, as I coach my athletes, I try and tell them most of our sprint freestylers to have a pretty open stroke, not necessarily straight arm, but I want to see their arms really kind of coming out of the water and grabbing a lot. And so if they start off swimming, you know, kind of a more traditional, smaller freestyle, I, I, I stop them and I'm like, all right, guys, open up your strokes, swim like you want to swim at the end of the year. Um, so for me, when I dive in the pool, I, I'll loosen up just a little bit of freestyle and then I'll try and get right into my breaststroke and the rest, breaststroke that I want to use uh, when I race. Wow, well, that makes sense. So did you take much of a break after, um, now you swam trials, you also went on to swim at the Southeastern Champs. Did you have a break at all in between then and uh, now? Uh, yeah, I took about probably almost two months off um, out of the water. Swimming kind of at the end of the two months, I started getting back in and splashing around just a little bit. But, you know, being the summer that it was and kind of um, the career that I've had, I needed a long break out of the pool. Uh, I think this those two months were the longest I've taken out of the pool since I was 13 years old. Um, so it was, it was well needed and well deserved. Um, and I think my body was able to recover as much as my mind. Just you beat yourself up for so long and you do so many hard workouts and you just don't take a break. Um, it was really refreshing to get back in and I kind of much needed, I would say. Definitely. So let's go back. We haven't spoken to you since trials and you have an unbelievable story here in that you just missed out on making the Olympic team in that 100 breaststroke. But then you go on to swim at the Southeastern Champs. You go almost a full second faster, which would have qualified you. I know this, this might be a sore subject. Maybe you can let us in on how you've been handling it. But let's go back to um, your race at trials and what you did differently to swim, swim faster in that meet that was there to follow. Well, you know, at trials, I felt really, really prepared. I had probably done my best warm-up of my entire career leading into the finals of the Olympic trials. Um, but as many breaststrokers know, sometimes you dive in the pool and your stroke's not, right not there and it's not necessarily clicking. Um, so that's what kind of happened to me going out in the first 50 of my 100 breaststroke at the finals of the Olympic trials. And if I don't have good length in my stroke, I'm the type of swimmer that I have to really think about my length because I have a quicker tempo. Over, tempo and turnover. Um, so I ended up the last uh, 25 meters at the 75 mark, I just started spinning out and I just lost all my hold on the water. And that's why I went slower than I did in the semifinal and even the prelim. So, um, you know, it was disappointing not to make the team. It hurt a lot. Um, but that is what it is. And that's what the Olympic trials is. And you know, after I got back, I took probably four or five days off. My wife and I talked about, you know, maybe swimming another meet. Uh, I knew I had a much better swim than even my prelims and semifinal swims were. So I wanted to give it another chance and to try and improve on my time. I had never been under a minute in the 100 breaststroke without a textile suit on. So that has was my goal all summer and, you know, I wanted to go to the Southeastern Championships because it was at a great pool, and I would have a couple coaches there at Auburn Aquatics that I've worked with, uh, Lionel Moreau and uh, Jeff Dellinger. So it was really, it was comforting for me to be able to go there, and it was, you know, it was just for me and my personal satisfaction of doing a time that I knew I was capable of doing. And I went there, and I went out 
uh, pretty fast, 27.8, and brought it home better than I ha ever have before just by keeping that stroke length that I just talked about that I missed in the Olympic trials. And that's what it, well, how I ended up going 59.7. Well, great, great case of perseverance there. Uh, unbelievable story. And I think it's going to give you some more mo momentum going into the future here, which you're getting set very soon to go to the Grand Prix in Austin. So keeping up with that momentum, how are you feeling in the water these days? Well, right now I would say I'm kind of on the upswing of what my training is. I've started lifting some pretty heavy weights lately um, and, and being more consistent, uh, being in the pool all the time. Uh, like I said, my second daughter is only two months old, so um, I would say November and most of December was a little bit of a kind of a wash for me trying to, one, transition my wife from Auburn to Columbia and also having a brand new baby on the way. So, um Basically, after Christmas is when my training has been more consistent. So I would say this meet for me is more of a gauge to see where I'm at and what I need to adjust. Now, are you planning on attending most of the Grand Prix circuit meets? Uh, I'll, this will be the only Grand Prix circuit I do before NCAAs. You know, our schedule is going to get more and more busy with uh, additional meets and then conference. And then I'll be gone for a couple weeks in Indy for the NCAA championship. So... Um, I won't. Com I'll compete again. I think in the Arizona Grand Prix and then the Charlotte Grand Prix. Well, that's great. We'll be out there in Arizona, so we look forward to seeing you in Mesa. Uh, mm -hmm. Long-term plans. Have you put much thought into that? You know, right now I'm trying to see how I can balance coaching and swimming, and it's a day-to-day -day process. And if I swim this summer and I don't get the result I want, then. Um, it'll probably be time for me to hang up my suit. If I'm able to maintain a really high level of swimming and coaching, then I'll keep on doing it. Uh, just kind of depends on whether or not I can figure out this balance in the correct way. Yeah, it sounds like you're doing an unbelievable juggling act right now. So Missouri, though, obviously is allowing you to have that great flexibility. So that, that obviously is something that must be unique to that program or your setup right now. Um, how we're, we're in the midst of a really exciting college time right now, getting set for conference, NCAA is coming up. How's the outlook on Missouri looking? You know, we're really excited because this is our first year in the SEC, and um, we are excited to show what we have. At our um, invite at the beginning of December, we really, really put up some big times that shows us that we are now – contenders to be at the NCAA championships and the SEC championships. So basically, I don't want to say we have a chip on our shoulder, but we certainly have something to prove to everybody that Missouri is, isn't what Missouri used to be. Missouri is a, you know, a program that's on the rise, and we want to show ourselves off. Excellent. Well, you're doing a phenomenal job juggling everything that's going on. Congratulations on the newest member of your family. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you... Uh, Good luck in Austin, and we'll see you out here in Mesa. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mark. Bye. That's Mark Gangloff in the Finis Monitor, and that's going to conclude today's morning swim show. Make sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with all the latest news. I'm your host, Tiffany Elias. Thanks for watching.